How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and this one feature alone made me go out and buy an FX3. Up until now, I had no interest in the FX3 because it was practically a gray A7S, but Sony's latest firmware update includes a couple different log shooting modes, which essentially turn the camera into a baby FX6. I actually did a video a few years ago covering Cine EI, but I thought this would be a great opportunity to do a little bit of a refresher if you're new to the channel. So new to version 2.0 are three different log shooting modes, which you can select from this new menu. Flexible ISO is business as usual, and you can raise the ISO until it's 12,800, and then it'll switch over to the high base. Cine EI Quick is similar to flexible ISO, but once it reaches 3,200, it switches over to the lower end of the high base ISO. Cine EI is the same as you'd find on any other FX camera. You can manually pick your own exposure index at whichever base ISO you want. This is all great and dandy, but Cine EI is a little bit confusing if you've never used it before, so here's a little bit of a primer. When you're in Cine EI, the camera will always record at its native base ISO, no matter what you change it to. All the camera is doing is changing the monitor LUT to appear brighter or darker to sort of trick you into exposing for that given exposure index. For example, if I'm at a base ISO of 800 and I go all the way down to 200 EI, the image looks two stops darker on the monitor when I'm filming, but the actual recorded image is still at native 800, meaning that I have to manually push the image back down in post so that it looks similar to what it looked like on the monitor. So the big question is why? It's essentially optimizing your footage for post to maximize dynamic range. By always recording the native ISO, you're recording the cleanest possible image with an ideal allocation of highlights and shadows, and it forces you to think about your exposure choices and how rating the camera at a different exposure index affects your image. When you start using different exposure indexes, you shift where your camera sees middle gray. Imagine underexposing a shot by a few stops and then bringing it back up in post. You're reducing the chance of clipped highlights, but since you're letting in much less light, you increase the noise when you bring it back up. The same process happens in Cine EI, except that the Sony cameras leave the footage alone for you to make that exposure decision in post. This comes with really big implications, however. Shooting with Cine EI requires one of two things, an editor that understands this concept and will do a color pass, or a shooter with a lot of ISO discipline. Nine times out of 10, when I'm handing over footage from a job, the editor just slaps on a generic Rec. 709 LUT for the entire timeline. And if you're shooting with different exposure indexes all over the place, your footage is gonna look like shit, and you're gonna look like you don't know how to properly expose footage. That's why I usually refrain from touching my exposure index at all, unless I'm handling the footage myself, or if I'm just changing one or two shots. Sometimes I'll even generate a quick LUT for the editor to use if I rated the entire project at a specific EI. For example, if I shoot interviews at a lower index for squeaky clean shadows. This makes it really turnkey for the editor and takes the guesswork out on whether or not your footage is gonna end up on the internet looking like garbage. Oh my God! When you shoot with a lower exposure index, you're taking dynamic range away from your highlights and giving them to your shadows. This results in a cleaner image with less noise, but just remember that there's no free lunch and you'll start clipping highlights a lot faster. This also works the other way. Whenever you shoot at a higher exposure index than your base ISO, you'll start taking away dynamic range away from your shadows and giving them to your highlights. That's actually what the little number right after the EI indicates, which is how many stops above middle gray you'll be able to capture. At 800 EI, you can see that I have six stops of highlight latitude, while if I'm shooting at 320 EI, I lose about a stop and a third of highlight detail. This is actually how ISO works in all cameras. They just usually bake in the exposure index so that the recorded file reflects what it looks like on the monitor. It's kind of counterintuitive, but when you're in darker environments with a lot of shadows, you generally want to use a lower ISO, while if you're in a bright scenario with a lot of highlights, you want to use a higher ISO. All right, so what does this mean in practice? The reason I'm so excited over this feature is because I can't tell you how many times I've been stuck in a situation where ISO 640 was too dark, but 12,800 was way too hot and usually forced me to close down by about two or three stops. There was never any in-between, which is why this update has me pretty fired up now that we have way more flexibility with base ISOs. With the FX6 and FX9, if I were ever caught in a dark environment, my solution would be to switch to the higher base ISO and then write downwards for an even cleaner image at a higher EI. I never shoot higher than my base ISO unless I absolutely have to, since the image gets pretty ugly pretty quickly, and you might as well just use the higher base ISO since it's there. 
For my money, I'm probably gonna stick with Cine EI Quick because like I mentioned before, I'm always usually writing down and once you cross 3200 at the high base ISO, you're getting a super clean image, albeit with reduced highlights. You can see that when I switch over from 2500 to 3200, you have a much lower ceiling for highlight retention. It's also worth noting that you can burn in a selected LUT using traditional picture profiles, but your ISO will work like it normally did with your two bases at 640 and 12,800. You can use Catalyst Browse to view your footage with the intended exposure index along with the embedded LUT, and from there you can copy your footage over to a drive or transcode to a new format. I usually only use this software to scrub through dailies without having to open an entire NLE, but every once in a blue moon I'll use some of these extra features. Hopefully this video is helpful in some way. It might take a minute to wrap your head around the concept of ISO and exposure indexes, but once you understand it, a lot of other things will start making sense. I've been really enjoying the FX3 since I've had it so far, and I'm always amazed at how powerful and nimble these small little tiny cameras are. There are a few other features included with the new firmware, like revamped overlays and timecode support, but I'll save that for a future video once I've spent more time with the camera. Shout out to Win Films for commenting on my last video and snagging a few of my stickers. Slide in my DMs and I'll be sure to send some out. If you want some for yourself, leave a comment down below with hashtag is that a red. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.